Hi there, good golf here with the next video on Steamworks and Mayor. As promised in the Steamworks introduction video, I want to show you how to use the Steamworks lobby for Mirror multiplayer games. So here we go! Let me first show you in-game what we want to achieve. First, let's follow the route of the player who creates the lobby. In the Create Lobby screen you change the lobby metadata. Enter a name, select a map, determine the maximum map slots for players, add a lobby password and check if the lobby will only be visible for your friends on Steam. Then you create the lobby and you automatically join it. In the Selected Lobby screen you wait for the other players to arrive and let them signal that they are ready to join the game. When everyone is ready the Start Game button is enabled and you can initiate loading the game. A loading screen will appear and next the game scene starts. The second route is to join an existing lobby. When you enter the Join Lobby screen, it shows the available lobbies in Steam and refreshes on a regular basis. You can select a lobby from the list and click Join. In the selected lobby screen, you join in a not ready state and have to signal when you are ready to join the game using the buttons. When you are ready, you'll have to wait for the lobby creator to start the game. You can use the lobby chat to communicate to other players in the lobby. Note, I didn't implement checking for the lobby password yet. Ideally, that's something to be done between joining the lobby and showing the selected lobby. A recap of the flow in game is shown on this slide. There are two routes. Create a lobby and start the game. Join a lobby and join the game when the lobby creator starts the game. Before we start looking at the code, I want to highlight what I mentioned in the introduction video. I will be using Heathen Steamworks components because they make life easier when setting up Steamworks and Mirror in Unity. Technically, you can do all of this without the components, however, you'll need to dive into the Steamworks documentation and build it all yourself. Note that the Heathen Steamworks components closely reflect what's in the Steam documentation, so it's not mission impossible. Ok, let's take a look at how the code works together with the scenes. The first scene contains the menus to create or join the lobby. Heathen's Lobby Manager and My Steam Lobby Script do most of the heavy lifting. When the lobby creator starts the game, all players are pushed into the mirror room and automatically signal they are ready. Note this is a ready for the mirror network room manager signal, since the ready signal for Steam is already processed in the initial scene. Now the network room manager selects the right game scene and loads it. If we first look at the scene hierarchy, you see that the lobby related code is all attached to my lobby manager object. Heathen Engineering's lobby manager and lobby chat director. My Steam lobby script which basically implements the events from the lobby manager. The logical flow of events is shown on this slide. With an invoke repeating I search for new lobbies every two seconds. The search parameters are pre-baked into the lobby manager in the search arguments properties. It fires the event found with an array of lobbies found, if any. If the join lobby menu is active, then I show the results, each in its own instance of a UI prefab. Create a lobby uses the create arguments properties of the lobby manager. The name and the slots have their own properties, and there's also a type property to flag if you want the lobby to be Steam friends only. Other data like the map and the password need to be stored in the lobby metadata. Once filled, use the lobby manager create to create and join this lobby. I also set a flag to signal this player is the host of the game. This is important to know when we start the game. From the lobby UI prefab mentioned earlier, I can join a game which kicks off the user joined event. Once that happens, the selected lobby details can be shown. These details will also need to be updated whenever something changes in the lobby. This is mostly dealt with by the lobby metadata updates, which is triggered for changes in the lobby. This also includes players signaling when they are ready or not. 
When the lobby creator starts the game, the code first makes sure this player is indeed the host of the game. Then it retrieves the Steam user ID and through the lobby manager's lo joint lobby it sets the game server with this Steam ID. This basically starts the mirror host using the user's Steam ID, then kicks off the lobby game server event, passing on the host player's Steam ID to all joint players. Each of them can connect the Miro client to the host using the Steam ID of the host. Let's take a look at some key code snippets. The start method of my Steam lobby script sets up a timer loop to search the lobbies every two seconds using invoke repeating. This updates the list of available lobbies. The search lobbies method calls the lobby manager search method and that method uses the search arguments you can change on the component. Once the search is submitted, the found event is called, which points to my report search results method. Here we browse through the results and build a UI item in the list of lobbies, one for each lobby. In the list of lobbies, you can click on the join button, which we'll call the join lobby method, which calls the lobby manager join method. The create my lobby is called by the create and join button. It retrieves values from the UI input fields and adds these to the create arguments of the lobby manager component. You can add as many properties as you want through the metadata key value pairs. In my case, I add the map name and the lobby password to the metadata. When the metadata gets changed, it triggers an event so we can update the lobby data in each client's UI. This includes changes to the lobby members so it can update the UI list of members. The show lobby members function fills the UI list of members by creating a UI object for each member. The start game button only shows if I created the lobby and the Steam lobby reports all players are ready. They can use the ready, not ready buttons on the UI to report ready. The key to starting the game is the start game method, which retrieves the host's Steam ID, starts the mirror network manager in host mode, and then kicks off the lobby game server event to pass the host's Steam ID to all other players. They can connect to the Steam ID using it as the host address in the mirror start client call. I have uploaded the key piece of code to my GitHub repository. You can use it to browse through and check some of the key concepts. It will not be possible to use it in your own project since it heavily builds on my UI and components I cannot include. However, I do hope you will find some inspiration from it to create your own Steam Lobby code. Ok, that's it for today and I hope you liked the contents of this video. Thank you for watching and I'm off to create the next video.